for the last reflection, I'm actually in my chapel in Kilkenny, the 150th place of worship in the diocese. Remarkable to feel that I have gone everywhere and gone nowhere. But for those who've traveled with me, I thank you. For those who've been generous, I thank you particularly. And I hope in some small way this has been an opportunity to chronicle uh, various sequential snapshots in the life of the Church since disestablishment. We'd hoped to end this uh, peregrination originally here in the Bishop's House in the summer on the longest day of the year with a big garden party with representatives from every parish in the presence of, presence of former President McAleese, but that was not to be. But here I am in my chapel, which is very much part of this house, very much part of the concept when this house was built, that it should have a proper chapel. And as well as my own use, this has been uh, the venue for pre-ordination retreats, for small confirmations, for various occasions that have been, in a quiet way, special uh, and energizing spiritually, one hopes, in the life of very many people. All through these uh, reflections, and I come finally to 2019, last year, we've had little snapshots of one might call it the providential evolution uh, through history of church society, politics, economics, human rights, and even humor in the years uh, since disestablishment. I know it's hard to talk about uh, how God and history relate and converse, but I always think history is a very uh, profound, uh, like creation, a very profound source of divine disclosure. Yet in going through all this, I wasn't trying to set forward what they used to call a Whig interpretation of history, which is a sort of notion that everything is going forward with inevitable and positive progress. For there have been setbacks and mistakes and dragging of heels, including by the church, and things could indeed have been done differently or not at all at times, to use that famous phrase. And the chief rebuke to the whole notion of steady perpetual progress, the greatest setback of our time, is of course COVID-19. And when I wrote many of these talks back in January, it couldn't have been envisaged in the way it has unfolded among us. Now it seems one can only remember 2019 in terms of, as Louis XIV was supposed to have said, après moi le déluge. The past is another land. They do things differently there. They huddle in bars. They have crowded bun fights and broken halls. They share a common cup, as we long to do again. So, um, it has turned out that for church and society, the years I've surveyed have been bookended by crisis. Disestablishment, the pandemic. And in 50 or 100 years further on, people will analyze how society and its great institutions emerged from the pandemic, just as I've surveyed how the church emerged from disestablishment and reconfigured itself in the context of the society it is called to serve. My great memory of 2019 was the meeting of the General Synod, in a past that already looks so different, a meeting that took place for the first time in Derry, with all its associations with disestablishment, with the hymns of Mrs. Alexander, Bishop Alexander, who was uh, famously thrown out of the House of Lords uh, when the Act of Disestablishment was passed, but came in due course the longest surviving bishop to have been appointed by uh, the old method by the Crown. And of course there are many more modern memories of Derry too, particularly as we walked its walls and remembered its divisions and its troubles. Um, there was a wonderful uh, party, a wonderful sociable event in the restored Guild Hall, and a wonderful drama about the events of disestablishment and Bishop Alexander and his wife and her rather doleful hymn being sung in the cathedral on the first day of the new state of the church, almost negative and rather lacking in hope about the future. So as we look back at that famous gloomy hymn about a new year dawning on a churchless nation, we of course now smile. Yet 150 years later, we can hardly sing at all, when again there is much to be anxious about in terms of loss and finance and sustainability, and we really can't sing at all. But now, as then, we will prevail. We are our successors, will look back and smile. We will again sing with Mrs. Alexander in a more joyful mood as we celebrate the eternal truth that long ago God entered our history as one of us, as a vulnerable child, thereby making all things and all history different. 
And so we look to Christmas, to this and all Christmases, singing with her as we contemplate the providence of history. And he leads his children on to the place where he is God.